My name is Brad Perkins. I am a lecturer here in the Construction Engineering Department. I'm a licensed professional mechanical engineer in the state of Iowa. I, in 1997, I graduated from Iowa State with a degree in Construction Engineering with a mechanical emphasis. From there, um, my work experience has been that in designing buildings, designing mechanical systems for buildings as a consultant. That's what I have done uh, pretty much my entire career, done, worked on the design side of things. A few years ago, four years ago as a matter of fact, I was convinced to come back and teach at Iowa State and I have been doing that for the last eight semesters. Teaching classes in the construction engineering department on mechanical design, uh, but also materials and methods, um, contract organization management, those types of classes. And in the summers, for the last two summers now, uh, I've been teaching a class on LEED. More about my background. After leaving Iowa State, graduating from Iowa State, I went to work at Black & Veatch, uh, the power division down in Kansas City, where I worked on a cogen plant for the Kingdom of Bahrain and a nuclear power plant uh, for Taiwan. Um, after a year and a half, a company that I had interned for here in Ames convinced me to move back, to move what, what we consider, my wife and I, back home, closer to home anyway. So I came back and I was a mechanical engineer for a mechanical contractor here in Ames. Did that for a while and then uh, switched jobs, went to work at KJWW Engineering in Des Moines, Iowa as a mechanical engineer. Designing large bo boiler plants, chill water plants, doing energy analysis. Uh, this is where the bulk of my experience comes from. Some examples of projects that I worked on here in the Iowa uh, area. Des Moines area specifically. Allied Insurance Building, the downtown building, I did the boiler and chiller plant for that. Same thing for the Wells Fargo downtown building. Uh, the Iowa Labor Laboratory. The Iowa Labs is where we have the State of Iowa Medical Examiner, the Department of Criminal Investigation, also the University of Iowa Hygienics Laboratory, and uh, the Department of Agriculture Lab. All of those. I started out as a designer on the Iowa Laboratory. Before it was finished, I was the lead mechanical engineer for that project. That was one of the first buildings, if not the first, to attempt to go for, go for any level of lead certification for a building. Uh, we started design work on that back in 2001. So it was fairly early um, in, the, in the lead process. Lead was, was originally developed by the U.S. Green Building Council in 1993 but it was several years before it made its way uh, off the coast, shall we say, and into the heartland. So early 2000, early 2000s, that would have been about the first time uh, anyone was doing any projects in Iowa. Now, where that has gone from that point of, of doing one project, now here on campus anyway, all of the new buildings at Iowa State, uh, the goal is to achieve some level of LEED certification for the buildings. It's, it's become a, um, an owner institute standard, if you will. Iowa State University has decided that they want to have all buildings built under this standard. So it's gained popularity. It's become a lot more prevalent. Also, in between uh, high school and before coming to college, I was in the United States Navy as a nuclear reactor operator on a submarine. So I've done a lot of, I have a lot of experience in energy, in power, and, and building design. And that's how I teach this class. I think it's important to understand the perspective of your instructor because I have a lot of bias. In other words, I have, I have things that I like, things that I think, hey, this is a good way to go. My experience has led me to this bias. And I want everyone to understand, it's important to understand the perspective of, of your instructor because I want you to know for sure when I'm speaking in terms of fact, this is the way it is. This is, you know, absolute and opinion because there's going to be lots of opinions in here. You know? um, in my opinion, this is a good idea. In my opinion, this is a good way to design a building. In my opinion, this is a good place to spend money. All right? Because there's a lot of both in the LEED program. All right? How many people, let's just, let's just start here, how many people have heard that LEED, not, I didn't ask if you believed it, how many have heard that the LEED program is the best way to build a building? No one's heard this? Come on now. I didn't say you believed it. I said, have you heard it? Okay. All right. How many people have heard that lead is a bunch of tree-hugging um, uh, horse crap that adds extra cost that's unnecessary to a building? Heard it. 
Okay. All right. Now, those are both opinions. In my opinion, I am in neither camp. I can't, I'm not going to sit here and tell you that this is the best way to build every single building out there. I don't believe that. Uh, but I also believe that there are some very, very good parts about this program that personally, as a mechanical engineer, I like. Right? So it's somewhere in the middle. My opinion is it's not for every owner, but it does make sense for a lot of cases. There are some good parts in this that I, that I do like and I do think are worthwhile and worth the money. So is it tree hugging stuff or the only way? Nah, it's, the answer is it depends. It's somewhere in the middle, somewhere in the middle. How many people have heard that uh, lead is so prohibitively expensive that it adds maybe 40% to the cost of a building or more? Heard it. Yes, some of you have. How many people have heard someone get up in front of a seminar maybe such as this and say, lead doesn't add any more than 1% or 2% to the cost of a building? No one's heard that? I have. I've said it on seminars where people say this. I don't buy that either. Now, the question is, how much does it add to the cost? Because there's the dreaded question in construction, isn't it? How much? Owner looks at you and says, well, Marco, how much is this going to cost me? What's wrong with whatever you say next, Marco? Yeah. Well, it depends. Yeah, there you go. Well, it depends is the real answer, but that's not what the owner wants, is it? It's not what the owner wants. Um, the answer might be, it depends. And it depends on what? It depends on well, what strategies are we actually going for? The, after we go through all of the credits and all the points and all the prerequisites, I think you're going to see this for yourself. The answer is, well, what level of certification are you going for? How many points are you trying to achieve? What specific strategies are you, are you going to take to get there? You cannot just say to an owner, well, it's exactly, it's always this percent. Anyone who, who says that, I'm, I'm highly skeptical of. Anyone who comes out and says, oh, it's only 2% every time, mm, I don't think I believe that. All right? I personally believe, yes, it does add cost to a project. Is it prohibitive? Mm, it depends. Right? Not always. Right? And I'll let you form your own opinion of that as we go through the individual points and the individual credits in this program. Okay. First off, reference material. Reference material that you're going to need. All right, this book, right? Green Building Design and Construction. Here we go for distance ed so you can see it. All right, Green Building Design and Construction Reference Guide 2009. This is the LEED 2009 book, if you will, All right? And wow, it's thick. <laughs> All right, you're going to be able to use this on your exams in this class, so you need to buy this. All right, those of you in distance ed also, in uh, continuing education, you need the book as well. If you have any hopes of studying for the exams, you need the book. You need the book. And let's, let's show here uh, how, do we, how do we get the book. All right. This is on, on, the, web, on, on the monitor here. Uh, U.S. GBC's, U.S. Green Building Council's homepage. This is their website. This is where you have to go. You can't go to the bookstore. You have to order it through here. All right? Now, how do we get there? USGBC store. There along the top, top right, if you will. Go to the store. Go to publications. And the website is slow. All right. Publications. All right. See this note. Please note, LEED 2009 reference guide are now available. LEED 2009 incorporates a bunch of stuff, a bunch of revisions. LEED has different products available for different types of projects. When LEED first came out, and, I'm, and up through, oh, 2001, when we were trying to do a laboratory under LEED, LEED was really meant just, just for school or uh, office space. And then at some point, we recognized that you know, a hospital or a lab or a school or commercial retail is different than just an office type of building. So there's multiple products that, that you can use to certify a building under. So they came out with something called new construction and major renovation. That's the bulk of the projects that contractors are going to be using, using, uh, using lead under. 
right? But they also recognized um, there's things like core and shell. For example, core and shell and commercial interiors. Core and shell, um, think of it this way. If you were building, if an owner was building a shopping mall, they have control over how much of the building? The exterior. The core systems, maybe the common spaces, um, the building wall, the building envelope, the, the windows, those types of things.